Hi, this is Inkworks. I'm Irene. And because things are moving pretty quickly here, I'll ditch the dilly dallying and get straight to business. But first, a big welcome to first timers and a huge welcome back to multi timers. If viewership keeps growing like this, we'll have to haul the patio bench into the studio after brushing it off thoroughly, of course. Don't need any more spiders in the house. Blah. The surface is Strathmore 500 series cold pressed watercolor paper. It's 140 pounds and 100% cotton. The single brush chosen for this piece is a number four quill from Princeton's synthetic Neptune line. I would planned on using lots of water, so grabbing my thirstiest brush was a no brainer. For paints, I went with Da Vinci brand watercolors in quinacridone gold, quinacridone red, and thalo turquoise. Phew. Now that's out of the way, I can get to the dilly-dallying. Well, with some process talk interspersed. My first step was applying some PBO drawing gum liquid frisket. Mine is a bit old and gloopy, so using a plastic palette knife, I gave it a good stir before using. Now might be a good time to go over the inspiration for this project. We're nearly a month into summer, and I wanted to create something evocative of the season. Something that brings to mind ice cream and iced tea, soda pop and popsicles, hot dogs and dog days. Whether it succeeded or not will be decided at the end. Spoiler, regardless of initial aspirations, I'm very happy with the end result. And the process, despite any complaints, was a whole lot of fun. You know, I've previously talked about the ugly stage of painting on several occasions, but I've never seen anything quite like this. It's as if a troll a chewed snot all over the paper. A shuddery thought that returned while pulling the stuff off later. Oh, I'm placing a pen in that achoo business because I've got quite a tangent to take you on, but that's for later. Although they aren't good enough for eyebrows or collage work, my dollar store tweezers did come in handy for adding thin, wispy lines here. I didn't want to use a brush for this because the frisket really gunks up brush hairs. With plastic or metal, it's easily peeled off. I think there's an applicator that's specifically marketed for this purpose, but apparently I just couldn't be bothered. Actually, it's just really low on the priority list, since this is only the third time I've used PBO drawing gum. Once that was dry, I thoroughly dampened the paper and brushed on very wet washes of color for the first layer. Even at this early stage, water was on my mind, like bodies of water, lakes, streams, oceans, because I associate them with summer activities. As a young adult, I once had a very thrilling dream where I watched from my bedroom window as I caught a wave in my backyard. There was no ocean in my backyard, but in my dream there was a huge wave and I was surfing it. This was soon after watching Point Break for the first time, the original 1991 film with Keanu Reeves and Patrick Swayze. I understand there's been a remake, which I have not seen. Is it any good? I'm actually afraid of deep water, and I don't think it stems from seeing the movie Jaws at the tender age of seven. More likely, it's because I was once pulled under at the beach. I was very young and had gotten too close to the water. The next thing I knew, my feet were pulled out from under me. I was submerged and flailing. 
my family quickly pulled me out, drenched and sputtering. Yeah, I think that was it. Almost drowning at the beach made me afraid of deep water. Jaws just gave me a lifelong fear of sharks. What were my brothers thinking? They'd brought me along to the drive-in with them, and because I was so young, I got in for free. I've actually come to admire Jaws over the years as one of the best examples of effective cinematic art. Seriously, it's a near-perfect movie. I've watched it a couple of dozen times and will happily watch it again. After the first layer had dried, a second layer of more concentrated color was added on top. It was coming together, and I could see good things happening due to my thoughtfulness. That's right. For once, one of these abstract experiments was working out due to a well-formed plan rather than sheer luck. <sighs> Yum. Troll snot. Removal of the drawing gum wasn't as easy as expected. I'm inclined to think it's less of a paper thing and more of an old and gloopy frisket thing. So remember that Achoo stuff from earlier? Well, there's actually a song called Achoo from one of my favorite bands, Sparks. Best known for their catchy tunes and clever lyrics, they had, in my opinion, the best song titles. From This Town Ain't Big Enough for the Both of Us, to Don't Leave Me Alone With Her, to I Thought I Told You to Wait in the Car, to Lighten Up, Morrissey. But to bring this around to the seasonal discussion, Sparks recorded a song in 1977 called Over the Summer. It was very Beach Boys-esque. And my favorite sort of Beach Boys song is the homage type. Because there was a time when I had two consecutive jobs where the Beach Boys were played nonstop in shop. Okay, I'm exaggerating, but it felt like I couldn't get away from them for a good 15 years. Over the Summer is pleasant enough, but it's much too repetitive. I prefer Sparks' Sparks, <laughs> Sparks's Let's Go Surfing, recorded many years later. It's not Beach Boise, but still summery in a more poignant way. Other Beach Boys type tunes out there include Skeet Surfin' from the movie Top Secret, Cruisin' Music by the Rubinus, and best of all, Pale and Precious by a band called the Dukes of Stratosphere, which was actually XTC in Psychedelic Disguise. So, here in the U.S., the most important day of summer is the 4th of July, our Independence Day. Plenty of Americans do it up big with vacations, travel, picnics, barbecues, going to the beach, and watching fireworks displays. These days, producer Mike and I like to take things easy. So, this year, it was a simple backyard family cookout. My brother grilled several types of hot dogs, Mike made delicious potato salad, and I prepared coleslaw and jello for dessert. The day was warm and sunny, ideal for eating under the umbrella that covers the deck table. It was going great, until a line of ants crawled up the table and started hauling away the Johnsonville brats. We managed to retrieve most of them, shake off the attached thieves, and congratulate ourselves. Not this time, you little buggers. Kidding. Our meal was without incident. Just checking if you all were paying attention. There's a lot I like about this piece, from the brightly colored layers to the chaotic randomness of it all. But the one thing that pleases me most, its ability to work in any orientation. 
making equal sense every which way. I want to point out that Inkworks isn't one of those channels that posits a question at the beginning of the video, strings you along for a grueling 10 minutes, only to present a wishy-washy answer such as, I don't know, what do you think? Because I recently watched a video like that and it pissed me off. Yeah, I think this project meets my summary goals, instilling mental images of water parks and water balloons, tiki bars and barbecues, shave ice and shaved legs. But my judgment could be skewed. I mean, I have been listening to Let's Go Surfing again, and I'm pretty sure, contextually speaking, surfing is used as a metaphor. Then again, one is bound to see anything as a metaphor after hearing it on loop for an hour. Hey, I never said I wouldn't qualify my conclusions. I'm happy to share this watercolor painting. Left, right, up or down, it's a keeper. Until next time, remember, for the good of all, sneeze into your elbow and stay artsy, my friends.